Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Dilmar again, and today I'm really excited because I'm gonna continue the videos with ML Agents. In this video, I'm going to be focusing on how the commands work when you're doing training. So we're gonna be looking at the first command, which is going to be the ML Agents-Learn. I'm going to be walking you through some of the parameters, such as the resume parameter, the force parameter, and also what happens when you don't specify parameters. We're also gonna be looking at how we can increment the max steps that we can specify during training, and how can we resume some of the training by using the command line. So let's jump into Unity and start looking at it. All right, guys, so for today's video, we're going to be looking at the MS Learn command. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm in Windows right now, so I'm going to be activating my virtual environment. So I'm gonna to go to virtual environment, and then I'm going to go into the EMV that I created, which in this case, that's the name. And then we're gonna go into scripts and then activate the PS1 because I'm running in PowerShell. If you're running on Mac OS, then you just have to do source and then activate, and that will activate your environment. If you missed that part of my videos, make sure that you watch the previous videos under the machine learning ML agents playlist, which I'm gonna be putting in the description of this video. Okay, so now that we have it activated, you're gonna see this thing right here. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into my project, which is going to be the Unity ML Essentials. And a couple of things that I wanna show you here, I'm just gonna go ahead and open the folder. You're gonna see that if I go into assets, we have this folder called results. And I have all the different runs in here. And if I go into run one, you're gonna see that I have, you know, the YAML file, a CSV file. If I go into two, then I have the NN file. I think I'm missing that one from the first run, but this is gonna be the brain, right? This is gonna be the one that you're gonna be hooking up to your agent. And if I go to, you know, number A, you're gonna see, it looks like I've been doing that over and over. Let's go ahead and look at nine. Yeah, so this is gonna be the generated file that you're gonna be dumping into Unity, and then you're gonna be hooking that up so that the, the agent actually knows how to move around depending on, you know, what your machine learning use case is. But anyways, these are throwaway folders. This, and when I say that, that means that I just keep them during the time that I'm doing runs, and then I just delete them after. You can also check them in if you like to. I just noticed that they're taking a lot of space, so I didn't wanna check them in. But if you go into my Unity ML Essentials and we look at the git ignore file, you're gonna see that I added that as a, you know, a file that I'm ignoring. Like I said, if you want to check it in, you may want to keep stats of each run. You may want to check it in. In my case, I didn't wanna do that. So that's why they're not in this repo that I check into GitHub. So now that you know, you know where the files are gonna be put into, which is gonna be the training data, then what happens with that training data? How do we generate more runs? How do we look at that training data? And that's what I'm gonna be showing you. So let's go ahead and look at, let's go ahead and look at one thing. So we're gonna go into my assets folder here. And if I do ms learn, let's see, ml, ML agents that learn, and if you hit enter, it's going to be showing you all the different parameters. And it's actually gonna run, I think, if I run it by default without passing parameters. Normally on an application, when you do that, it'll give you the parameters. I think I'm I'm used to I'm used to that. But anyways, it shows you it shows you this, it's going to start running. And what this is saying is okay, I'm ready for you to start training. And it and it tells you here that you have to hit play. It says, you know, listening on port 5004. You start training by pressing the play. So if I, if I were to hit play, it's gonna start doing the training. I don't wanna do that because I need to, I want to specify a couple more parameters. So if I were to do this, then I also need to specify where the config file is. And if I go up, I believe I already have that in my, in my keyboard. Let me think right about here. There we go. So what you need to do is you need to specify the YAML file. And this is gonna be the YAML file that you're using for training. In my case, I decided to put them in here. Unity also has a lot of these ones in their repo. So if I were to go to the repo, let's go ahead and look at that here really quick. I'm just gonna go ahead and open up a new PowerShell and then go into code. And I think it's under ML agents. And I don't think so, I know it is. And if we go into their repo, we can look at config and you're gonna see that all the PPO examples for YAML files are here. And I ended up just using one of them and then making adjustments and reading about each one of the parameters in order for me to create one. I didn't wanna to have to clone the repo in order for me to have this file. So what, what I decided to do is just dump those files into the config directory, and then you know I can change them and tweak them, and then I can have them in my own source, co source control repo. So anyway, so if we go back to, let's go ahead and go back into 
this console right here. We can minimize this one. So that's going to be the first parameter. It's going to be your YAML file. That's what's going to be used for the training. And then the next one that is really important is going to be the run ID, right? This is you know, your unique identifier for the run that you're doing. And the reason why that might change is because let's say that you want to go into your agent here. And let's say that you want to change some of the parameters, right? Like you might, I don't know, you might change the speed. You might change the max steps. You might be changing some of the tags that you include on the ray perception ray perception sensor. I can never say that word for some reason. But you know, any tweaks that you make, you want to have a unique run ID, unless you know that you need to throw it away, meaning that you can overwrite it. So that's what I'm going to be doing here. I'm just going to be just creating, let's go ahead and create a new one, right? So if I go to results, I have, you know, 11 runs. So what I'm going to do for this one, I'm just going to go ahead and create a new run. So I'm going to go to 12, I'm going to hit enter. And as soon as I do that, if we go into the folder, you're going to see that that created run 12. And if we go into run logs, right now there's nothing because I haven't started training. But if I were to hit play, you're going to see how files are going to start getting generated here. You can see the car behavior got generated and there's some events out that got generated. I actually haven't looked at this when it's running in runtime, which is actually really cool to see. But anyways, it's going to start generating files. And you can see CSV file got generated. It's probably because it's gone through a few steps. So if I go back here, yeah, I think it's because it went through 5,000 steps. So it has enough data to generate a CSV file. And if you keep going, you know, you let it run, it's, these files are going to start generating, increasing because, you know, it's getting more training data. And as soon as I kill this, if I do Control C to kill it, Control C to kill it, then it's going to, you know, have my little brain. And this is the one that you're going to be able to go into your agent in here, if I go to the inspector, and you're going to be able to connect it with the behavior parameter, which is this file right here, right? So, okay, that's great. Let's say that I, you know, I wanted to make, I wanted to make another run. So let's go ahead and close this one. We don't need that one anymore. So let's do maybe on this one, I just change, let's just change one small thing. We can change the speed on this one. Let's go ahead and double it. So we can do that. And I can do 6,000 max steps. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back here. And I already did 12, so let's go ahead and do 13. And it looks like everything is working, right? I can just, now we can hit play. And it's going to start, you know, going through training with, you know, the speed of the car. It's going to be a lot faster. And we're going to go into my file system here. And you're going to see that now we have, you know, run 13. So I could do control C to kill it. And it's going to say, okay, I got this file that got generated. And if we go here, we should have that file as well. So now we have multiple runs. So that's great, but how do we look at that data? Do we look at the files in cells and go and double click on them? I mean, you can. I haven't done that, but what I ended up doing is I use something called TensorBore. And I showed you that in the previous videos, and that's what I'm going to be using here. So we're going to do TensorBore, and then you're going to be specifying a parameter, which is going to be the log deer. If you don't specify any parameters, I think Google did provide you with the parameters that are available. And, oh yeah, it looks like you have to say, so we can just do dash dash helpful for, de for detailed examples. And I haven't done that, but they provide you with all the different parameters that you can use with TensorBore. And this is the one that we're going to be using. It's going to be log deer and then the path. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say log deer, and then we're going to be specifying a path. The path is going to be results because that is the current directory and that's where I have all the results, so I'm just going to go ahead and hit enter. And what that's going to do is going to be serving all those files to set TensorBore. And TensorBore, like I showed you in the previous videos, is going to be kind of like an analytical tool that is going to show you reports about the runs. So now what we can do is I can go here. We can go ahead and open up Chrome or your favorite you know, browser. And now we can see you know, all the different runs in here. And this is what I wanted to show you on the left side. You can see that I have run one two, three, four, five, and then it goes all the way through 12, 13. So let's go ahead and do another run. So I'm going to go ahead and I think I need to do a new window. So I'm just going to do, let's go ahead and do this. I'm going to go code and then virtual environment. And I can pull up that virtual environment, scripts, activate. And this is good that we go through this exercise again. And I'm going to be pulling that in. We're going to go into assets. And then I can just do, do Opera because I'm lazy and I'm going to hit enter. 
and we're just going to we're just going to refresh here and see if it shows. So it still shows 13. And that's because it hasn't. I don't think it has generated everything. And I'm going to hit play just to start a new training. And let's go ahead and look at our console here just to see what's happening. So right now it's running through training, right? There's really not a lot of a lot of data. And what I wanted to find out is if the tensor board was going to refresh automatically. And there we go. We have round 14. And that's the one that I'm currently running. So if we go here, you guys can see that that was the last one that I executed. So we can look at, you know, round 14. That's going to be that ID. That's the ID here. So if you wanted to uncheck everything here, you can uncheck all different runs. And this comes really handy when you, right now I haven't really run, you know, too much training data because I just started it. But as you start running data, you might want to do a comparison. Let's say I want to compare nine versus three or something like that. Then I can just tag all these two and I start looking at that, right? And, and this is helpful because, you know, if I change the parameter on this one, this is learning faster, then you know that that's going to be the run that you want to go with because if the, if the agent is performing better, then and the graph is telling you so, then you, want to, you may want to grab the file that I show you from the results folder, which is going to be, in our case, let's say that four was the one that was performing better. And this was a bad example because that one doesn't have, let's go ahead and look at five. That one doesn't have one either. And how about seven? I think what I was doing on the other ones, I was just moving them out and I lost them. So anyway, so in run seven, I could have, you know, grabbed that one and then drop it into my training data and hook it up because that's the one that my graph is telling me that is, do, that is doing better. And also, obviously, you want to look at it, how it runs in Unity before you, you decide that that's the run that is running better. So, so let's look at another thing I want to show you. I'm going to go ahead and stop this. So what happens if I were to rerun this again and I hit enter? Say that I want to run 14 one more time. So it's going to tell you, you know, you can't really run it because it's, it's already, there's already an ID generated. And it tells you here, and I found that you could do a force, but the graphs are going to be all screwed up if you do force. And what I ended up doing, if I want to recreate that, then what I do is I just delete, I just delete it, right? I come in here and I say, you know what? I want to just delete 14. And then I can just hit up arrow run 14 again, and then it's just going to be, you know, acting like it's a brand new run because it is a brand new run. You don't have 14 created. So we can go ahead and stop it. Let the file get generated. So what if you wanted to resume that? And, and you might ask, Dilmer, how does that work? What is resume mean? So, so the way that it works is I can just do resume, right? And I can just do that. And it's going to look at the last step that you, that you ran. Let's say that we went through, I don't know, 5,000 iterations and you stop this from running, it's going to keep basically a checkpoint of, of, that, of that file when it, when it got 5,000 5, steps going through. So what you can do is you can do, you know, the resume command It's going to resume it, and then I can hit play and continue. So I can try it, we can just do resume, and we can go here and hit play. And you're gonna see that there's really, you know, there's really no errors. It's saying resuming training from step 549, so I only run it for, for that many steps, and then now it knows that it needs to pick up at that point. So this is really helpful when, you know, if something happens, I don't know, power goes off, or you, you may want to do something different and, and then come back to it. I, I ended up doing that a lot. Like, I didn't want to do training for too long. So how does this relate to, you know, to how many steps you can run? And I want to show you something else that I learned through going through this process as well. So what I'm going to do, let's go ahead and go into VS Code. This is really helpful when it comes to training. So let's say that I am doing my, my car, my self-parking example, right? And when I started doing this, I can specify how many steps these, this training data is going to be generating. Right now, this is a very large number, right? I have it set to 10 million. But if I wanted to start with something like, you know, I want, I want to start just with 1,000. Let's say that you want it just to go through 1,000. And, and let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you exactly how that works. So let's go ahead and do self-parking. We can just call it V2, just so that I can show you. And, and we're gonna have just, you know, 1,000 steps. So I'm gonna go into PowerShell here. We can just go ahead and go ahead and go into that command. And then instead of saying self-parking, I'm gonna do self-parking V2. Make sure that you have the right case in there. And then let's say that this was run 15. Let's just brand new run with the brand new YAML. 
So I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. And in this case, I'm going to let it run for that many steps. It shouldn't take that long. It should be pretty quick. So I'm going to go ahead and hit play. And we're just going to, we're just going to watch it and see, and see what happens. So I'm going to run it and I'm going to say, okay, this is working fine. And it looks like I think it finished already. So if I were to, let's go ahead and do this again. And it's going to say, okay, you need to resume to do it. So let's go ahead and do resume. And if it doesn't let me go through and do more training data, that means that it, it you know, already went through five, for, with a thousand steps. So let's go ahead and check it out. It looks like it did. It went through a thousand steps. So let's say that you have that going and you go into your, you know, tensor, tensor bore. And we looked at run 15. So it looks like I need to run that one more time because I kill it here. I'm going to just go ahead and I think these errors, these type of issues are good because they're going to teach you exactly what you need to do if this happens. Okay, so that is running. Okay, let's go ahead and do control R to refresh it. So let's say that I go through here and I say, okay, you know what, run 15, went through a thousand steps, but it didn't perform the way that I wanted to perform. So another thing that I ended up doing is, okay, you know what, I, I wish I could change this to maybe 10,000, right, when I increment it. But okay, so I go here, I save it, and it looks like, you know, I have 10,000 steps. Now I can go back into PowerShell and let's go ahead and, and now I can do this, but if you don't specify that parameter, it's gonna, it's gonna complain. So now what I can do is I can do a resume. We go ahead and close out of this. And then it's not gonna complain, it's gonna keep training because now it went from 1,000 max steps to 10,000 steps. So it's smart enough to know that, you know, I already trained for 1,000 steps, but I have 9,000 remaining. So that's why the resume is so helpful because you can do, you know, you can use it in conjunction with the uh, YAML file if you wanna do more training. So let's say that I do that, I go here and I go to Unity and we're just gonna go ahead and look at it. And you can see that it did 1,006 and now we're, you know, in 1,007 and it's gonna keep going through that process until it reached the max, which is 10,000. So looks like we went through 5,000 already. It's gonna keep doing training. It's gonna tell us, you know, what our mean reward is what our STD of reward is, and it's just gonna say training. At some point in here, it's gonna finish, and it looks like we got 10,000, and then we're done. Everything is stopped automatically. Now, if we go into our tensor board, I hit refresh. Now we have, you know, some, some data. This is, this is better, now we have a graph. And it kind, of tell, it kind of tells you here, you know, what the value is. And, but we were able to go from 1,000 to 10,000, and that's what I wanted to show you, you know, how you can use the commands to basically specify whether you want to force a, force a new run, which is going to be, you know, you can do something like this, which I don't recommend doing, but you can. I, I'd rather just delete the entire folder, or you can do a resume if you want to resume a run. You can also change the parameter here if you want to increment how many steps you want to run. So that's everything that I wanted to show you guys. If you guys have any questions about anything that I just showed you today, please let me know in the comments. Thank you. All right, guys, thank you for watching this video today. I really appreciate your time. And if you have any questions about anything that I just show you on ML Agents, please let me know in the comments. And also be sure to find me in patreon.com where I'm basically posting what I'm doing behind the scenes. And I'm doing the same thing in Twitter and also Instagram. So make sure to follow me there because it's really gonna help me in bringing you a lot more videos. Thank you, guys.